Welcome to Flash Tutorial Request 103, Reset Again. I'm going to use a previous tutorial to show you how to uh, do some things when trying to start uh, a game over. Uh, this person asked me to pick this particular uh, tutorial. It's Flash CS6 Tutorial 8, Falling Target Game Part 3. It's on this YouTube channel, and it's in a uh, playlist that is titled something like uh, Flash by Request. And I have that tutorial opened on my stage. And the first thing I want to do is add a button so that we can reset the game. I'll just give you a quick shot at the game here. And you click these, and as you hit them, you count the hits as the seconds go down. And when we get down to no seconds, the game's over. Game's over. They want some means of clicking and going back to uh, start over. Um, I suggest that you just watch the video and uh, see if you can get something from it. But if you want to actually follow it, you're going to have to do that tutorial I was talking about, that tutorial 8, Falling Target, Game Part 3. So, I want to start by opening up the library and getting this clock movie click and I can see here that it has this frame here 25 which is the game over frame and here I want to add a button so I'm locking all my layers selecting a layer to put the button on inserting the layer making this a blank keyframe and I'm going to put a button on here uh, I'm going to use black for my stroke, red for my fill. I'm going to use the rectangle tool or the oval tool, it doesn't matter. I'm using the rectangle tool and making sure I have that frame selected here and making a little rectangle. Uh, picking up my highlight tool, highlighting it, right clicking on it, convert it to a symbol. Make sure button is selected, and I'm going to call it again, A-G-A-I-N, shift underscore B-T-N. Copy that name. And up here, paste it in for an instance name. Paste it in. Need an instance name if you're going to write code. Now I'm going to click on that button. Now I'm inside that movie clip. This is the rectangle, REC. I'm locking this layer, inserting the layer, and calling this my text layer, T-E-X-T. -E I'm picking up my text tool. I believe the text tool uses the fill. I don't want red, so I want to click here and pick up a black fill. And down here, I'm going to write text, T-E-X-T. -E That's not a very big font, so I'm going to just double click on it open the properties panel I want to make sure it's static text not dynamic and times new Roman is good make it uh, big enough to fit reasonably in your I'm gonna make it 20 pixels make sure you embed it embed and make sure upper lower numerals and punctuations is selected okay and I think I still want it bigger than that. I'm going to make it 40. And this and change it. Highlight it. Yeah. Make it 40. Which might be a bit large. But I'll deal with that. I'm going to use my, my free transform tool right here. Free transform tool. And click on the corner. And make it smaller. Now my selection tool. And drag it in here text box so now we got to write some code for for our button um, select this first this last frame of the actions layer right click insert a blank keyframe open the actions panel and type in this code type 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 again underscore btn that's that button I just made period add event listener small a capital E capital L that turns blue open bracket it's a mouse event capital M and a capital E period click click is all capital letters C L I C K 
So from here to there is all blue, comma, and I'm calling this again, just like the same name as the button, close bracket, semicolon. And here we're calling the function up. Function, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, turns purple. Again, you can copy the word again and paste it in. Open bracket, event, small e this time, turns blue, colon, copy mouse event, paste it in, close bracket, colon void, void is the same color as function. Open curly bracket, and as you start to type this in, you're going to get this closed curly bracket. If not, you'll have to put it in. We're going to do a trace, and we're just doing the trace so that if the trace comes up and the other things don't work, we know the button is working, it's just the other things. So trace, T-R-A-C-E, turns blue. Open bracket, quotation, I'm writing again. You can write anything you want in here. Close quotation, close bracket, semicolon. So we gotta, first of all, set reset a timer. And if I go back to the timeline and look on frame one here, we have a timer, a variable, and it starts at 10. So that's the first thing I wanna do is make sure that timer is 10. So I'm back on that action. So time, period equals 10, semicolon. I want to be able to go back and start the um, timer over again. And this timer works by just looping through the timeline. So if I look at the timeline, this timer just loops around here. If I look on here on frame two, that's this, this is where the, the clock is timing up and timing up and timing up right here. This is where it tells it to go back. See, it dec it's actually decrementing here by one and going back in a loop. So we want to make sure that is working. So we want to, oops, excuse me, select that frame we're working on. Go to and play frame one. So go to and play, small g, small t, capital A, capital P. It will turn blue if it's spelled right. Open bracket one, close bracket semicolon. So it's gonna go back and start timing over again. Those loops, does 10 of those loops, like that. And also we wanna make sure we're going back to and start up on our main timeline again. So we use this movie clip parent. So movie clip, capital M, capital C, turns blue, open bracket, parent, P-A-R-E-N-T, small p, close bracket, period, go to and play, same as up here, small g, small t, capital A, capital P, open bracket, one, close bracket, semicolon. So let's see what happens here. Control, test, movie, test. No errors, that's good. I'm gonna hit a few blocks, one, two, three, and I can see my counters counting, four, five, hit another one, seven, eight, nine, and my counter, and it's game over, and I hit nine items. Now when I go back, here was the problem that this person had. This was not resetting the number of hits. The timer working good, but it's just starting off at the previous 10, 11, which is not good. And that's very easy to overcome, very, very easy. I'll go back to frame one for a minute. I'll go to the timeline and I'll open the timeline action code. And the problem is, is this, this is called count hits. That's the variable. That each time we hit something, if I look down here, each time we hit something, we add one to that counter. And what we gotta do is reset that, that hit count. If this was Action Script 2, one of the very few things that is better than Action Script 3, but if this was Action Script 2, this variable, I could use it at make what's called a global variable, and I could use it in the clock movie clip and update it there. But that's, you can do it, but that's a bit tricky. So the easiest way is right here, put an enter like that, and copy this name, copy, paste it in, say equals zero. Now you would think that would work, so let's try it. Control, test, movie, test. Here we go, I go count of one, count of two, count of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if I start over, it doesn't work. Here's the simplest thing that we can do. Back to the main timeline. Click here, drag all in one motion. 
right click, insert keyframes. Because what we're going to do now is, if I go back here, because this is on frame one, this is only going to happen once. I'd have to go leave that frame and come back in that frame. And that's what this is doing for me. So now when we go to frame one, we're going to jump into here, click back here, and go into there. But before we do that, we have to make sure it stops on this frame. So back on this frame one, at the very, very top, put a couple enters, stop, S-T-O-P, open, close bracket, semicolon. Now we got to make it so it actually goes to that frame two so that it can indeed come back and reset this this hits count hits variable and that's done in the clock movie clip we're on the clock movie clip now select frame two and open frame two and right here where normally we would go back to frame one to start over here we want to go back to frame two and once it goes to frame two it'll stop when now when you press it to uh, here I'll show you now when you press it here until it go to back to frame one that's when it's actually going to jump from frame one to, excuse me it's going to jump from frame two to frame one and everything will be reset and this should work no errors get as many as I can I think 17 was the tops that I got 16 goes back to zero no errors make sure I can do it twice hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope you use what you learn